Hi, this is Dilaka Mandela, the founder uh, of the Tembikile Mandela Foundation, author of I Am Dilaka, and a social activist. Uh, I'm live on, on the Star newspaper, Facebook Live, uh, talking about the challenges women have uh, nowadays, you know. Um, off the top of my head is, I mean, uh, there's more, even during a pandemic, you know, the statistics of uh, gender-based violence keep on increasing on a daily basis. We still have to mm -hmm. level the playing fields in the, in, in the job market and uh, not to talk about uh, the abuse that we see escalating among women i mean just today i saw a video of a you know of a child you know uh, the children of south africa of children as young as seven years old being abused by their their parents by by their fathers by people that they know so the gender-based violence um, keeps on increasing at an alarming rate of late, I mean, during this pandemic, um, and I recently learned this uh, this week still that the people that are affected most by by COVID nineteen, with the frontline workers, are mainly women, mainly because perhaps it's it's more women that are, um, are uh, you know, um, are nurses. So that keeps on increasing and increasing at an alarming rate. Okay. So, I mean, for instance, what are the challenges, you know, that we face as women of today, in the 21st century? It's one, it's gender-based violence. I mean, early on this month, on the eve of, of, of gender-based violence, it was, we watched in horror, you know, as, as, as Norma Kigaba was arrested. And and as as in and as, as some would say that you know she committed a crime by by defacing a car, but if you have to go deeper at what you know tri trigger that you know it goes to the to the to the heart of of gender based violence. Uh, that is gender based violence. Women are faced with. Uh, they have to bear the brunt of, of, of poverty, you know, because from time immemorial, women have always been the people that are, are holding the fort at the homes. So even during this time, it is women that are facing this poverty because they have to shield the children. I mean, I think women have, in, have always inherently bore the the weight of, of, of running the household from time immemorial. But I mean, from experience, I mean, gender-based violence is, is, is multi-layered. You know, you get, you get physical uh, 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 abuse, you get sexual abuse, you get emotional abuse. And I can talk vastly on various forms of abuse that women suffer. And it is more and more, especially nowadays in, with, you know, during this lockdown, a lot of women are stuck in, in relationships that are difficult to get out of. Oftentimes, women find themselves with their, with their, with their back against the wall in terms of how they deal with, with this, because on the one side, you are dependent on this man for sustenance, for, 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 for finance, and how do you then bite the hand that feeds you? Because some women find themselves in, 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 in that state. And I think we need, as women, we need to have different conversations. My frustration has always been, oftentimes when we, or we talk about uh, issues that affect women, I have found that women are, the, are our worst enemies. If I have to make an example about the Noma Gigaba issue, you know, when it, it, it read, it, 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 it was on, on social media, a lot of women were saying, yeah, she deserves it because 
she took another man's husband. The only reason that men are always will always win over us is because they barely ask questions. They, they support their men. They, they are their men for without asking questions. And they would ask questions later. As women, we never ever face, we, we never ever ask questions. We never ever support and ask questions later. In the Noma Kigaba issue, people were saying, yes, she deserves it because she took another man's wife. You know, and I, I would argue that there is no person that would take another man's wife, honestly, honestly speaking, because a person falls in love. If I had to make an example that that is actually closer to home, I would make an example about my grandmother, Evelyn, who was Nelson Mandela's first wife. Would we then say that Mama Winnie took that man from, if anything befell her and you say, no, it is because it saved her right because she took Mama Evelyn's husband. No, we don't use that argument. I will never understand why women will never protect other women. We do this all the time. This thing of Noma happened at the very, the previous week, we all had on Instagram, on all forms of social media, we had women posting black and white pictures to say that I support another woman. And when Ben, just at the beginning of Women's, Women's Month, God had to call us, because God has a very funny sense of humor, had to call us on our bullshit. Normal thing happened. What did you get? You get, you got women that were vilifying Norma without getting to understand what was the root cause of what made her do that. I'm not condoning anything. But as women, we are our worst enemies. If you have to look from time immemorial, if you arrive at work and if there's more women, it is women that will be looking at you up and down. A woman that doesn't know you from a bar of soap will look you up and down and like, hmm, I wonder who she thinks she is. So I think we need to change the narrative as women. We need to have these difficult conversations of how do we really support each other as women at the, at the very core of it. I mean, it, it bothers me that if a, a man abuses a, a woman in a marriage situation, it is the mother-in-laws that would actually say, be hypocritical enough not to reprimand their sons because now it's something that's hitting home. They will not say, my son, you are, you are, you are wrong. They will take the side, side of the son. So as women, we, we are really, we, ne we rarely ever support each other. So how do we begin to have these conversations that will change the face of, you know, the, the, the scourge of gender-based violence? I believe that we need to have a gloves-off conversations as women alone to say what it is that is it, what will it take for us to form the, 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 the brooder bond, for the lack of better word, the, 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 the boys' club, because men support each other whatever the circumstances so how do we begin to have these conversations as women how do we begin to to say yes when we look at gender-based violence we always look at the symptoms of it how do we start looking at what is the root cause of 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 of, of gender-based violence because i mean perhaps it's because i'm a nurse by profession it is, uh, I believe, to cure any disease, you have to look at the root cause. We need to have these conversations as women and really, really support one another because at the heart of it, yes, there are different layers and how we need to, to, to raise our boys, our boy child differently. You know, because I believe that between men and women, we have different roles to play. It's, it does not mean that because I'm a woman, I'm a less, I'm less intelligent. But we have d different roles to play by virtue of the fact that I fall pregnant and give birth to a child. It means that my role is different from that of a man. What is the role of men then? How do we then teach our boys to play their roles? Never before has the, this, the, 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 the scourge of, of, of gender-based violence and the challenges of women be worse than it is right now in terms of, of uh, even now during 
COVID-19 because you get, uh, you know, people that are frontline workers are mainly women. And these, these people that are frontline workers as women, you get them more and more affected by COVID-19 because they don't have a, a proper PPE. How do we then tackle such issues? You know, because they, they, they dovetail to the broader society, not just affecting women. Because if you then, a health worker that is, does, does not have enough PPE, you then go home, you infect your children, and it becomes a vicious circle. How do we begin to tackle even the scourge of, 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 of corruption? You know, and, 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 and that is not just pertaining to women. It is something that is pertaining to the broader society. How do we tackle those issues? How do we tackle issues of, of, of rape? How do we tackle issues, and, uh, issues of, uh, you know, emotional abuse? Yes, emotional abuse you cannot put your finger on because that you don't see the scars. But I believe that, uh, you know... Um, Emotional abuse is much, much worse than physical abuse because you can see the scars of physical abuse, but you can't see the scars of emotional abuser because they knock down on self-esteem, you know, on a, on, a, on a daily basis. And I believe that until such time that we have these open and, and frank conversations intergenerationally, because they, there's a way that, you know, our grandmothers dealt with issues that affected them. And certainly, the way that they dealt with these issues is different from what we can, what we have now and how we choose to deal with those issues. You know, um, yeah, that's, 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 that's basically it in terms of, you know, uh, 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 the issues, uh, the challenges that face women. I mean, they differ from your urban areas to your rural areas. The, the, the foundation that I have started, you know, deal with, deals with issues of how we, we, um, we deal with uh, children, girl learners that can't attend school because of a lack of sanitary way. In this day and age, there are still children that don't have sanitary way, that have got to miss class on average three million of those girls miss school and that's still relevant even now during the sketch and I think worse during the sketch I mean it has affected a lot of, of, of NGOs I mean my NGO for instance we're on the verge of getting a container load of sanitary wear that could have distributed for the whole year for children for girl learners but that was circumvented because of the of COVID-19 so there, there's, there's, there's poverty there's there's, there's gender abuse, there's, there's lack of employment, there's, there's a lot that we as women bear. I mean, right now we're dealing with our children that don't have jobs. I mean, you, 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 you slave and you take your child to school. And at the end of the day, after they graduate, they don't have jobs. How do we, how do we begin to talk about those issues because I believe that as the saying goes here, yeah, you know, uh, you educate a woman, you educate a nation. And I believe that as women, there's a, there's a way, a softer way of, of how we can start to address issues that um, affect communities, that affect our homes. And it certainly begins right in your household at home if you want to change society we can only change it one person at a time and i believe that the one space that you can be able to control is family anything outside of family you can't be able to control so inadvertently it depends on how we deal with these issues from a a, a home base and um yeah you know yeah, because from home it goes to um, uh, it it goes to uh, the society to the community from community to society. So uh, these 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 are the issues that I also deal with in my book. I am Dileka, you know, where I talk about you know the issue of toxic toxic masculinity. I talk about the issue of 
of of rape i talk about the issue of actually being as women we always take a back seat a lot of the times people you know uh, revere my grandfather as as a man that was uh, you know progressive but inadvertently granddad was a patriarchal man through and through you know he he because i think with men it's it's because your seed is carried through a boy child you know so so was he 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 was he was a paper chakal man through and through if you have to look at the position that mandla and i sit i'm the eldest of the grandchildren and and yet mandla got more attention because granddad believed that this was the person that would take you know a apparent if for lack of a better word i remember one time we were having this um this uh, conversation over the table and he was talking about the stats of how much how many women there are in government how many you know how progressive you know south africa was in terms of emancipating women but it, we'd all turn around as the girls around the table to say well that same woman that you say that has got this position but when they reach home they have to be subservient so these are the issues that i i tackle in my book i am delega the relationship that i had my father I tackle issues of 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 rape because i was raped by my partner in my own home and the issue of how you 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 know i was able to deal with it and by you know yes i did not report it it was years later that up uh, during the me too movement that i came out with that not to 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 say okay because it is def- difficult one of the things that is actually difficult right now is to prove that as a woman you were raped years after the event especially if you did not uh, do a rape kit so these are the issues that you deal with this woman because how do you then reconcile because i maintain that until you have spoken about it and own your story about being abused it might as well not exist so for me it was not to say i want this person arrested because i did not do a rape kit it was to just unbed myself and and let go because of a lot of the time when you are consumed by anger it inadvertently uh, you know destroys you so um uh that's basically it in terms of you know the issues that affect women they it, it's a range of of issues but main above of, the main for me is gender based violence of how do we deal with gender based violence going forward how do we deal with making sure that our girls we also bring them up differently in in the term in in, in the sense that you know i i i think that we have we have put the emphasis as society on more material things that our girls now don't look for substance when they are dating men they are they look for the fact that he can he this is the car that he drives he can provide this and that for me and until such time that we make our girls self sufficient and i'm saying self sufficient deliberately because I don't believe that as human being we are independent because you are you will always be interdependent to another person but with the word i use is self sufficiency because you need to 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 rely on your own abilities to break whatever cycle you want to break be it poverty or be it a, a abuse so how do we then raise our girls to be self sufficient to have their own jobs and not to rely because often times abuse you know arises from the fact that even if the person knows that they are abused they will stay in that abusive relationship because they feel that they have nowhere else to go how do we have these conversations for me it is through the social media that you have it is through having yes seminars but over and above seminars we need to start a, a, a you know a acting on 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 our own convictions i made an example earlier on of how sometimes these things that we partake in in social media they don't mean anything 
A perfect example is this black and white picture that we all posted last week. And when the crunch time came for us to support one of our own that was reacting from extreme abuse in a marriage by the name of Noma Gigaba, we turned around. Some of us did not support her. So we need to be able to have the courage of our convictions to say that if it is that I believe that this black and white is I'm supporting another woman, support that woman irrespective of what it is that they do. I'm not saying that people must support things that they don't, they don't believe in. I'm just saying that inherently women, we are our own worst enemies. I end my talk right there. I just hope that perhaps there's some things that you could pick up from what I was saying in terms of the challenges that faces that face women nowadays and how we can begin to have these gloves of conversations amongst ourselves first because I believe that as women, we have not been honest with one another in owning and standing on our truth. We believe that, you know, uh, we are different because of our social standing. And for me, I have brought being a woman in the 21st century down to choice. I choose to be whoever I want to be. And, I'm, and, and at times, I battle with those choices. But I know that inherently they are my choices. I believe that I am, am, am when the day came that I could sit through the work that I do, with a woman in the rural area and understand that her challenges are my challenges. I am no more different than he, she is because of the area that I live in. I, I knew that by finding my own voice and owning it, no matter what, I was winning. So until such time as women, we stand on our own truth, we own it. We don't suppress our voices. And I'm so happy that you know, Neilwe, uh, you know, the person that helped me write my book, encouraged me to stand on my truth, not to suppress my voice. And there was a time that I felt my voice was being suppressed. And I'm happy I, I was able to, to own it. So I say to you all as women, my message to you all in 2020, own your voice, stand on your truth. Be authentic to yourself, no matter what. Thank you.